Hello and welcome to another episode of The Myra Chavez Show. Today I have an entrepreneur who has owned her daycare business for three years. She is here to share with us what inspired her to open up her business, how she did it, and what this daycare is all about. And of course, she will be giving advice to other entrepreneurs. Welcome, Alma Mendoza to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course, thank you for being here. Can you share a little bit of your background with us? I am born and raised in San Jose, and I went to school here, and um, I have my bachelor's from San Jose State with, uh, in psychology with an emphasis in early childhood education. Um, after college, I also ventured into behavioral therapy. I was an intervention therapist, um, and I have worked in the school system for about 10 years and I finally decided to open up my own home daycare. Okay, nice. And why did you decide to open up your daycare? Um, I worked in a couple of centers and I decided when my son was born that it was time. Um, I wanted to be able to stay at home with him and also be able to make income. Um, I tried applying to different centers um, and I hope that there would be infant space for my son at the centers I worked at, but there wasn't. Yes. Um, so I decided that I could create that space in my home. Yeah, and it's very, uh, I mean, it, it's a win-win. And what did you have to do to start your daycare? Uh, how did you come up with the name and your logo? Um, that was actually the hardest, longest part of coming up, you know, with this process. Um, because I had no idea that I would need to come up with a name. Um, yes. It took me about two months to come up with a name. Wow, yes. And I knew that it was going to be an art-based daycare. So crafts, the word crafts was in my mind for a while. Um, yeah. And in the end, I decided on crafty kiddos because we are art-based. Um, and also the logo as well. Um, it's, it represents a learning tree. Yeah, I can with see With all of the educa educational items on it as well, surrounding the tree. Yeah, I think it's a pretty cool tree. It has the numbers, letters, and little hand, and music, and I can see art by this. So that's pretty awesome. And how did you, what's the process in terms of uh, opening your business license? Was that the easier part? Um, I think that for Every business is going to be different. Mm -hmm. For me, um, I just needed to start working right away. Um, so the LLC, the process of obtaining an LLC, I did that after I started caring for a few kids. Um, I didn't have someone to guide me yeah. uh, when I was in the process of you know, starting my daycare, but if I could um, give advice is to open up your LLC before you even start your business. Um, because it protects you from um, clients possibly wanting to come after your personal assets. And um, how was the process in creating your own website? Some people mm. struggle. Uh, what was your process? I think for me, I had to learn from the beginning that there was things that I knew how to do and there was things that I didn't know how to do so yeah. that that way, you know, I saw that there were things I was going to have to deviate um, to different people and one of them was my website I had to find someone that could create my website for me mm -hmm. um, and she also created my logo um, and she fixed up my Facebook page okay. and my uh, she gave me some guidance on my Instagram page as well so it, it, it's a very helpful service um, to get that type of help and to just have them do it and then you can focus on other things and I'm sure it wasn't uh, it, it was a bit pricey right as um, it all depends on who you use. Yes. Um, it, it, it'll definitely range. Um, all I can say is just look on the internet. Yes, um, look shop at around. Shop around and look at reviews. Can you tell us more about the curriculum at your daycare and uh, from mm -hmm. infant age to school age children? Sure. Um, so my program has an infant program. Yes. Um, I find that most of my infants by the age of one are already wanting to enter our preschool program. Wow. Um, that is the earliest I've had some of my infants enter our preschool program, and that's because they've been with me for months. Um, so they've been exposed to the curriculum yes. already. Um, I think that for infants, the earliest exposure you can give them into actual curriculum is best. 
so that's infant program and then I have my preschool program and that usually has children from ages two to five yes um, and we have a special cu curriculum that we use for them every month we have a monthly theme yes um, and that goes without a saying every month they're going to be learning about something new and I call it a unit of study um, every month has a theme and parents uh, are aware of it right before they enroll their children and every week has a lesson plan um, oh, wow. parents know the lesson plan the Sunday before the week starts and they know exactly what their child is going to be learning what they're going to be reading what vocabulary words they're going to be learning yeah um, and the materials that we will be using so in the preschool curriculum and I know it's a lot um, but I teach um, English I teach reading phonics vocabulary math science um, and they also do have uh, outdoor play and um, I wrap their learning around art and this is amazing I think because at, at preschool age you have a whole curriculum uh, that is based on science and math and ABC's I, I that's that's pretty awesome for our thank you for our preschool program yeah. actually I forgot to mention um, we recently joined the program a program through First Five. First Five is a big program in Santa Clara County. Um, they offer a lot of resources for daycare providers. Yes. And I joined them um, last year, actually, um, in the fall, and officially joined their Quality Matters team in January. And our program is a part of their SEEDS program. Um, we started that in late January. What basically that is, mm -hmm. is that um, they want to make sure that we're not missing any milestones for the yes. certain ages that are in our daycare. So um, they have curriculum that they also help us implement. Mm -hmm. um, and what I like about it is that it's not coming from a book. The okay. curriculum I'm learning from them to implement on the children I have yeah. is from trainings um, and from having them um, have a mentor in their program that guides us as well. Wow. So. Our kids already had a theme and a curriculum and lesson plans and as of January they have even more curriculum that they're learning so um, I was a bit nervous at first because yeah. it's a lot yeah for, for preschool for preschool and for infants as okay. well um, but it's a learning experience for me and it's been a learning experience for them as well and what other programs are there in your daycare besides the preschool program we have a school age program before mm -hmm. COVID. It was only for morning and after school care. Yes. Um, as soon as as soon as COVID hit, um, it became a full time program. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, but we're glad to have our school age kiddos here during the day. Yes. Um, so it's distance learning from home. Um, and for us, it's distance learning from daycare. Yes. Um, so they are here Monday through Friday full time and they have their schedule in the mornings um, from their school that they stick to um, learning online and as soon as their time is done um, learning from school they are basically transitioned into the daycare so everything else yes. that's going on with our preschoolers as far as like curriculum and stuff like that um, I incorporate them into it as well because I think that if they're here um, yes they could just spend the rest of the day doing art and you know playing and reading but I want them to continue to learn throughout the day so being here for school agers means distance learning and it also means learning at the daycare yeah what do you think makes your daycare stand out besides all of the curriculum that you have that's pretty awesome uh, for, for them so what do you think makes your daycare stand out um, I think that what helps us stand out is of course the fact that we are bilingual um, so I speak English and Spanish and with the children that we do have here during the day they are exposed to some Spanish um, I'm trying to incorporate that back into the curriculum okay so you had this before then I did have okay. it um, with the seeds program being incorporated yes. into our daycare and that's pretty much going to run for the next you know six months yes um, I would like to find a way to incorporate it back. I just don't want to bombard the children yeah. right now with Spanish because they have so much work they do during the week. Mm -hmm. um, 
So yes, we're bilingual and all of our staff is first aid, uh, CPR certified, and we do keep up with any train trainings that we need to take um, from the state. And um, I do have my behavior intervention um, training uh, yes. certificate as well. What that means is I can help parents if they are struggling with their child with a certain behavior. Um, I can create a behavior modification plan for them and we can work on it to help inc uh, improve the behavior. Um, also, I think uh, the fact that I'm well connected with resources outside of the daycare, so if yes. there's something that I know I can't help a family with, I know who to refer them to. So you do your homework and you find out what's next and resources and what else is new that you can provide or uh, you can provide uh, parents with. Yes. And I've also worked with children with uh, special education. Yes. Um, and just uh, behavior problems as well. And there's something special that you do for parents on the daily. And this is nothing, this actually takes time and effort individually for every child you do this. Can you elaborate on what you do? Sure. Um, I think what makes our daycare also unique is yes. that I offer parents um, photos, videos, and uh, pictures throughout the day and this is something that I've been doing every day since we started since we opened um, I've got little ones that have been here since they were just turned three and now yeah. they're five going on six and those parents can definitely tell you there has not been a day that I've missed that I don't send them pictures videos or photos um, and I also let parents know when their child wakes up from sleeping or when they fall asleep and wake up um, if their child is having um, uh, lacking an appetite for a certain day I let yes. them know as well um, if they're skipping meals because I think that um, as a parent you want to know how your child is doing yes um, and you want to make sure that their need needs are being met yeah but I mean this is I think really unique that you send them and I think as a parent um, it's it's pretty awesome to know what your kids are doing throughout the day or send them little photos so I think that's a pretty cool idea you totally nailed it right there. <laughs> COVID has changed a lot of businesses. Uh, some have even shut down. What has changed in your business due to COVID? Um, as soon as COVID started, I know that a lot of us didn't know enough. Yes. Um, so come, you know, two weeks into everything that had already transpired with COVID, I decided to close okay. because I didn't know um, I didn't have a plan in place. Nobody had a plan in place for COVID, no, right? No, I don't think so. <laughs> um, so I think that it really benefited me closing for a month because I was able to educate myself. Yes. Um, I was able to acquire resources from the county that I needed, um, and I was able to just make a plan um, as far as how to um, make a plan as far as how to deal with an exposure if there ever is an exposure at the daycare yeah. and I also bought um, a lot of more furniture a lot of more material so that nothing was shared everyone had their own of something everyone had their own table their own chair their own something so they don't have to share anything and uh, from day to day uh, just a little simple um, uh, a little simple recap what do you do from when they get here to the daycare to when they leave okay um, so we open at, we're open Monday through Friday yes. from 7.45 to 4.45 p.m. And for morning drop-offs, they range anytime between 7.45 to 9 o'clock. Every morning we have a health screening for each child. It takes about five minutes. Yes. Um, basically what it is is we have the children sanitize their hands. Um, of course, the parents as well. Everyone has their own pen. Um, and we take their temperature and there are questions that each parent has to answer every day um, on a piece of paper and they sign it stating that they are healthy um, yes. everyone in the household is healthy and that they have not been exposed recently to covid um, in order for us to let their child in okay mm -hmm. so that's the morning drop off which is i think the most important part of our day yes and right at nine o'clock is oh right when they come in they have breakfast um, and then at nine o'clock is when I have free play for them from nine to nine thirty uh, circle time starts at nine thirty I think that circle time takes a lot of our time in the morning mm -hmm. um, now recently because of everything that they are learning yeah so it ranges from like nine thirty to like ten thirty every day 
and after that they go to snack at 10 30. Um, so they have breakfast and then they have snack at 10 30 and after they go outside to play um, so between 10 30 to uh, 11 30 12 the children are working on different areas of the learning curriculum um, the, well the lesson plan for the week and they're doing art and they're playing outside and they're learning um, they could be incorporating science they could be doing on working on their vocabulary so it may look like the children are playing but they're actually learning stuff they just don't know it <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. they use, so you make it fun for them to learn and therefore they, it, it's easier I think also too they are like little scientists they're doing research but they're actually learning at the same time <laughs> nice so at 12 o'clock is when we have lunch um, and after that they do have what is actually free play outside which is you know they get to go on the playground they get to uh, play with our uh, play in the kitchen area all kinds of areas that we have outside um, but if it's raining another important thing if it's raining we don't bring the children outside yeah. um, unless it's going to be a learning experience for them and they have the proper attire um, so anything that they do do outside I can easily um, transition them into the home um, and do it inside as well um, nap time usually is from like one to three. Okay. Um, so and do they all know the schedule or do you still struggle a little bit with um, nap time? No, I don't actually since I started oh. I have not struggled with nap time at all because I make it clear to parents that um, nap time is from one to three and if yes. their child is a non-napper, I don't yes. make children nap. Okay. Um, then they can do quiet time activities. Okay. Um, when they wake up, they have p.m. snack, and after that, if they haven't finished their art from the morning, they'll work on that, or they will do quiet activities until they are picked up, or okay. play outside if the weather allows. Yeah, but that sounds like a full long day of play and learn incorporated using science and art and math and all of the things you explained and art. Um, if you had a time machine, Mm -hmm. to go back to the beginning to where it all started where you started everything what would you do differently what would be the do's and don'ts um i think i would have started sooner okay i think that why did you not start soon enough is um, it the fear that normally gets us <laughs> it's you know i worked that nine to five for so many years um and i was comfortable where i was working yeah and i was you know i felt like i was still in the educational field but a part of me knew that there was a different style of teaching and learning that I knew I could incorporate. Yes. Um, I think it was just the fear of leaving that nine to five, which is what a lot of us fear, you know. Um, yeah. It's because it's your security, right? Yeah, it's, you know, a steady paycheck is always, you know, yes. a good thing. Yes. Um, but I would have definitely started sooner. Uh, that's a, something I think that a lot can relate uh, having that security of you know your paycheck uh, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis benefits and of course of course the fear of starting something new and different and you know it's it's not easy but you did it mm -hmm. a and anything else you would do or change uh, in your time after you get into your time machine um, just starting sooner just starting soon is pretty much the main one Okay, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs who are starting their business, whether it is a daycare business or just in general? It's up to you. Message me. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook. I will help you. I think that um, just don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to reach out to other daycare providers and ask for help. When I was starting out, I didn't have... Um, I didn't have the best of luck doing that, yes. so I want to be that daycare provider that does help other businesses start. Did you go and ask other daycares and you just had no luck with that? or? Um, I think that because I asked daycares that were around my area, yes, they were very hesitant to help <laughs> because it's yes. competition. Yes, I totally agree. What is next for Crafty Kiddos and your company? Um, I think that right now uh, you know any business right now you know of course hopes to grow more um, with COVID I'm just happy to be in a stable place um, but I would definitely like to continue to grow um, okay. definitely any business that's a daycare wants to have a wait list um, and hopefully in the future look into opening up a second location um, or even branching out into a daycare center definitely growing is, is with any businesses what you know you you strive to do uh, what do you 
think has made your business grow? What strategy do you think? Um, I think that the fact that uh, the staff here is, you know, my family. Yes. Um, I think that we as a whole give, as a whole daycare, give off a family vibe. I think our transparency, um, okay. because parents have access to them, to their children at all times during the day. And I mean that as in photos, pictures, and videos. Um, yeah. Right now, we don't allow visitors in the daycare because of COVID. Yes. Um, but parents are welcome to pick up their children anytime during the day if they want to call or FaceTime because they miss their children. Um, they're more wel more than welcome to do that. Um, and also. Um, a lot of our families say that you know we are a daycare, we are a home daycare, but we also give off that family vibe. So they don't feel like they're just clients. Um, they actually feel like, you know, their children are a part of our family and we're a part of their family. Yeah, I have firsthand seen how kids get picked up by their parents, and they don't want to leave. <laughs> they want to keep staying at the daycare because they enjoy their teachers. You know, so I think that's pretty awesome. Do you have a quote that you live by do you, that you that resonates with you in your life? Um, yes. So this quote comes from the fact that I could have, you know, ventured into becoming an elementary school teacher or anything higher, but I didn't want to be. I didn't want to have to teach from a book. Um, so the quote is: "The best teachers teach from the heart and not from a book." Mm -hmm. uh, being able to have my own daycare, being able to implement the curriculum that I want to implement, Yes. Um, it allows me to teach from the heart and I don't feel the pressure to keep up with um, certain, you know, the guidelines, right? guidelines yeah. that need to be State met guidelines. from a book. I like that. Can you tell our audience where they can find you on Instagram, your website? Sure. Um, our website is www craftykiddos.com that's c-r-a-s-t-y-k-i-d-o-s dot com and our Facebook page um, if you look up on the search engine um, crafty kiddos with only mm -hmm. the kiddos is with one b mm -hmm. um, you'll find us and our Instagram page is also crafty kiddos but it's crafty underscore kiddos and I will post all of the links under the description box so you can find her and I just want to thank you so much for being my guest um, and, and allowing me to interview you. Um, this is, you know, such an amazing uh, daycare. So, And before we go, I usually like to play a game just so people can just know you a little better. So I'm going to ask you questions and you just get to answer and uh, let's get started. <laughs> what is your favorite movie? Um, good question. I like Coco. Coco the movie, that one's a really nice one. What, uh, what is your favorite food? Uh, I like um, boiling crab. Mm. Boiling crab. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what is your favorite dessert? Um, I don't like sweets. You don't like sweets. Okay. Mm. And what do you do for self-care? Um, I do meditate and also yoga. Yeah. When you have time to get away, where do you like to go? I like going to um, Los Angeles. Okay, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty awesome. And what do you like to do there? I like the piers and Disneyland. Okay, cool. And so the last question is uh, to get to know you is who's your favorite sister? <laughs> you I are. Say that, I say <laughs> that because I wanted to show and tell everybody that uh, this is my sister. Um, she, she, I'm the oldest, and then it's her, and then we have a younger one. Um, but I just wanted to let the viewers know that, and let her know that <laughs> I'm very proud of her. Of how far she's come along and I can't wait to see her business grow and I am and I will be her biggest cheerleader and um, again I can't I can't wait to see your business grow so I'm very proud of you thank you and no, <laughs> no tears I'm not gonna cry <laughs> that's the end of the interview I want to thank you again you can find me on the Myra Chavez on Instagram and YouTube you can find me under the Myra Chavez show I hope you've enjoyed this interview I hope that you got inspired and I hope you learned a little bit on running a business and um, I can't wait to have you guys back for the next interview bye